All right, we're back here on Sportsline. Phone lines open, 737-7767 is the number. Talking NFL stuff tonight, kind of fired up, I guess. Ownership around the league. Questionable moves. Not a big fan of Stan Kroenke dragging a team out of St. Louis strictly for his own personal gain with no real regard for the city, his home state that he's leaving behind. All the money left on the table for the Rams when they, or the city of St. Louis when they lured the Rams there in the first place. Frustrated by Stephen Ross, who essentially stomped on the grave, calling it a unilateral victory tonight. And forgetting about all the folks in St. Louis who bought season tickets and merchandise and kids who grew up watching that team as their favorite team. Frustrated, I think, by the Titans' ownership. We've talked about that. Not really reaching out to fans and explaining what their plans are, what their hopes are for this team, and leaving a lot up to uncertainty at this point. Your thoughts on all those issues. 737-7767 is the number. Mike's been waiting for a little while. Mike, we appreciate that. What's going on tonight? Hey, my friends. Hey, just wondering if we, if there's any chance of uh, maybe with a new owner, maybe we could bring in Jerry Jones since he's done pretty well with the Dallas Cowboys and make maybe have Peyton Manning as the head coach, and I'll hang up and uh, have a good day. Thank you. Mike, I apologize for being blunt, but simply no. That, that will not happen because there's a couple things in play here. Number one, Jerry Jones already owns the Dallas Cowboys. You can't own two teams. So he will continue to remain the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. Number two, probably the most important thing in the equation here is so far, at least what they continue to leak out to us, or Steve Underwood says last week, and he essentially is the mouthpiece for the Adams family at this point, is this team has never been for sale. They're not looking for interested buyers, and they don't plan to sell. So it appears that the ownership is going to remain the same within the Adams family. Amy Adams Strunk is the controlling owner for the foreseeable future at this point. And then on top of that, Peyton Manning, look, he's obviously coming to the end of his career, whether it's this playoff run or next season or whenever. Obviously, time is running short for Peyton as a player. And I have no doubt that whenever he wants to do something in the NFL, whether it's broadcasting or front office work or coaching, maybe even be a minority owner somewhere, he will be welcomed with open arms in that role by a team and by the National Football League. But a couple of things. You're talking about a guy who's played at a high level of quarterback for over 20 years, college and now the NFL. Do we really think the moment he hangs it up, he's going to say, all right, there's my spikes. Give me some loafers. I'm heading upstairs. Or give me a clipboard. I'm walking into the film room to be a coach or a front office guy. We don't think he wants a vacation or just to sit on the couch for a little while or something because it seems like that might be a logical thing for a guy to do first. The other part of that is there's no guarantee that you walk off the field as one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time and all of a sudden you're the best head coach or the best general manager out there. That's not how it works. There are other skills that are involved in those sort of things that you don't necessarily train for when you're the quarterback of the Colts or the quarterback of the Broncos. So while I think Peyton Manning will be very successful in whatever he chooses to do after his playing career, I think it's unrealistic to expect next year or two years from now that he's going to be a general manager or he's going to be a principal owner or a head coach somewhere in this league. There's just too many things that has to happen. He frankly needs some training in those regards. And when he does, I think he'll be great. I just don't think it's happening six months from now, which I think some people have rumored might happen is he's just going to quit football and then he's going to come work for the Titans. I don't think it's that simple. May happen, may happen, may happen at some point, but I don't think it happens overnight like some people have suggested. Let's go to Tina. Tina, good evening. Good evening. Um, going back to the statement about the money, um, I do believe it's about the money, and I understand what you said about paying out a $15 million contract. However, in order to get the fans back in the stands and in order to get the dollars rolling in, you've got to get the team on track. 
Yeah, well, I agree with that, certainly, Tina. Uh, the number one thing to make money in the NFL is be good. And right now this team isn't good. But from a fan's perspective, if they're making money choices to get people back in the seats because they want to be good, aren't you behind that? Well, I'm not a Titans fan. Okay. However, here's my thought process on that. Get them back in the stand. Get them back on your side. In order for her, she's going to have to show some sort of interest. So she had to listen to the fans. Do I think she listened to them? No. I think somebody was telling her what the fans or the thought process was. So, therefore, she had to get rid of the coach. Once she gets that money rolling back in, gets the team back on track to where they were, you know, years ago, then at that point she can sell the team for a higher dollar. Because I know they said they're not going to sell, not going to sell. They have to say that. Because if they say anything otherwise, they're going to start losing fan base. For, for the main reason of just what happened in St. Louis. You know, fans would be scared that's going to happen to them. So, get, you know, get the fans back on their side. Get that money but rolling back in. Get the team back where they need to be. And then she can sell the team for a higher dollar. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense, Tina. And we, we appreciate the call. Obviously, you got a better product. You can sell it for more. And in the short term, you got a better product. All of a sudden, you're not half empty at Nissan Stadium on Sundays, and you're selling more merchandise Monday through Friday. All of that is good for the pocketbooks, but it's also good for the fan base because the fan base right now wants a team that's competitive. They want a team that's relevant. They want a team that they feel like they can cheer for and won't be let down by all the time. So if you make those strides, you take those strides, yes, Ultimately, it will lead to more money, but also it's good for everybody involved in the short term. I don't know if I think if they got to that point that they would want to sell then. Certainly, it would be more attractive at that point, but uh, let's be real. When we look at NFL franchises today, when the Bills got more than a billion dollars a couple years back, that sort of laid it all out there for you. Buffalo is a small media market, upstate New York one of the worst stadiums in the league, a team that hasn't been very good, in the shadow of the Patriots that are the dominant franchise in the NFL of today. And they sold for over a billion dollars. Nashville is the it city in the world right now, according to the New York Times and some other people. They are a team with a franchise quarterback. It's the fastest growing city in America. It is a place that you would want your business or your team to be. The Titans would get a huge price tag if they went on the market today. One and a half billion or more, maybe two billion. I think it would be closer to two billion than one and a half. That is a massive price tag. Probably worth a little bit more if they got better, but I'm not sure how much more you can be worth, frankly. Because that starts getting way up there when you talk about how much a team is worth and what other teams have gone for. So we'll see. But again, all this speculation goes back to the point that unless the ownership comes out and actually gives us some directive, tells us how frustrating this whole process has been, or how they've gotten to this point as the ownership group and where they stand right now. What they're looking for in these hires, what the expectation is short-term next season, maybe five years from now. Until they start to lay some of those things out for us, all you're left to do is call into shows like this or sit around the water cooler on Monday morning and speculate talk about what went wrong yesterday in the game and speculate what's next. That's not healthy. It's not a healthy relationship right now between ownership and fans. And frankly, again, I think Amy Adams Strunk herself at this point deserves the benefit of the doubt for the action she's taken in the short time of being a controlling owner. I think she's answered a lot of fans' hopes with some of her moves. But when you don't talk about it, and you don't explain the moves, and you don't lay out the roadmap for what's next, 
You just continue to fuel that speculation. And that's where they stand right now. When we come back, we're going to hear from Titans President Steve Underwood. He's going to kind of lay out what he said last week when they made some of these moves. We haven't gotten to hear that on this program yet. Some of the things they're looking for as well. We'll get to that when we return on the other side here on Sportsline.